You're watching Barbecue with Franklin. I'm Aaron. And today we're gonna cook some pork spare ribs, make a rub, wrap them, sauce them, and then eat them. It's rib time. We're gonna start off by making a, a rub for these pork spare ribs. I've got one empty cup, this is what I will use to mix. As usual, salt and pepper, of course, is the base for anything awesome in my book. I'm gonna start off with about that much black pepper. About half that amount of salt. My general ratio for pepper to salt for pork ribs is two parts black pepper to one part salt. They're really thin and they're really easy to oversalt. That's kind of the basic thing and this is what we do here at the restaurant. But salt and pepper is getting a little boring so we're gonna throw some other stuff in there. It's a little bit of chili powder, not too much. I'm gonna throw a little bit of garlic powder. If you're doing onion powder or garlic powder, you wanna to try to do more of a granulated kind of thing. If they're really powdery, it's gonna settle and it's gonna clump kind of oddly. It might even cake a little bit. So I'll just sprinkle a little bit of that for some savory spices. A little bit of onion powder, not too much. And for color, not so much for flavor, I'm gonna add some paprika. Paprika is pretty standard for rib rubs. I'll give kind of a nice red color to it. Real simple, kind of mix it up. I'm only doing one rack of ribs, so I'm not making much rub here. But what I am gonna do, I'm gonna pour it in a shaker. Get the rub on the ribs really, really even. Unlike brisket and other things, where you can just kind of throw the rub on there, put it on the smoker, there's not as much smoke that goes on a, a rack of ribs, so I think it's a little more important to have a real even coat so you can see just pepper. It doesn't look kind of splotchy. You don't want it too heavy on the thin side. You don't want it too light on the thick side. And that's why I'm using a, a shaker, just to keep it kind of looking pretty. Now that we've got our dry rib rub made, I'm gonna trim some ribs. Ooh, looky, pork ribs. So what you're looking for when you go to the grocery store is you're looking for pork spare rib, not St. Louis cut and not baby backs. Baby backs come from a different part of the pig, little leaner meat. Uh, spare ribs typically have a lot more fat. They're gonna be a lot more moist and they're gonna have a lot more flavor. The full spare has the breastbone attached right here. So we're gonna cut that off here in a second. It's got anywhere between 11 to 14 bones. You can normally kind of count on 12 and it's not trimmed. If you look around here, it's just, it's got the bones and then it's got the cartilage and stuff in there. It's not trimmed, it's got the skirt on it, and it's got kind of a tip right there. What you're looking for, ideally, is something that has a lot of fat. And you don't want it to look too terribly lean, but you want to be able to see some striations of fat right there that kind of go with the grain. Lots of striations in there that's going to be a lot of flavor. It's going to render more moist ribs. They hopefully won't dry out quite as quick. If you'll notice here that this end is really thick. If I was doing a competition, my competition ribs would come from right here because those are the thick ones and they have the straightest bones. But we're not doing a competition. We're gonna eat this stuff. So we're gonna cook the whole thing. The knife that I like to use is a 10, actually it's a nine and a half inch, uh, just chef's knife. You're gonna be hacking through some bones and stuff. So if you have a really nice, delicate knife that's kind of thin, you probably don't wanna use it. You could use a cleaver. You could use a Yodeba, which is a Japanese, um, butcher knife that's shaped like a chef's knife. I use them pretty often, but they, they get kind of heavy when you're doing 60 of these things. So I like kind of a lightweight one with a thick blade. Let's get to trimming. First thing we're gonna do is kind of square this up. And there's kind of a baby little rib right there. It's probably gonna fall out while we're cooking it. It's probably gonna burn up anyway. So I'm gonna kind of put my knuckles right there. You're gonna lose it regardless. I kind of flip it around like that. You can slide your knife a little bit and it'll hit something right there. I'm gonna cut like that, kind of go through, and there's cartilage right there. If you feel something that's pretty crunchy, there are little pieces of bones that go through there. If you hit something, just go a little farther in until, it's, until the coast is clear. Get rid of that, or you could save it to use it for beans or if you wanna make a pork riad or something, you could certainly do that. And this is what they kind of call a Kansas City cut, and that's a full spare minus the breastbone. What I normally do is I kind of just box it off a little bit. I get all the rough edges off because you kind of figure if something's sticking out, it's going to burn anyway. Kind of hit the skirt. And the reason why I cut this off, this is a great piece of meat. If you want to use it for something great, I normally don't. If you don't cut it off, when it heats up, it's going to pull up anyway. So you'll have rub, you'll have smoky color all over this part, and then you'll have a bald patch right there. Don't really want that. 
that point, flip it around. You've got this. And if you like bacon or anything, this is where the pork belly is. The pork belly is just the fatty backside of this. So this meat's pretty good right here. It's got a lot of fat. But I always trim that off. Could have been a snack, but it's not. Trim that off because after it's cooked, when, say if, I'm, if we're having a lunch service and I'm cutting these things, if I left that piece of meat on there, the fat would cook out from between the two pieces of meat and it would just slide right off on the board. And that it's not very attractive and it's not gonna have any bark on it. Everybody knows we like bark. Just kind of trim it off a little bit. So while you're doing all this, get it kind of trimmed, run your hands across the bones right there. A lot of times, if you're getting mass-produced ribs from various companies or even smaller companies, when they run these things through a bandsaw, they'll go too fast and they'll chip the bones sometimes. Now that we've got our pork spare ribs trimmed up, we've got the breastbone off, we've got it trimmed up nicely, skirts trimmed back, little piece of fat's notched off the back. We're gonna pull off the membrane. Here at the barbecue place, I don't pull off the membranes, but most people do. They definitely turn out better ribs, and if you're only cooking a couple racks, you might as well pull them off. And what the membrane is, it's exactly a membrane. It's a membrane. It goes right here. It's gonna be on the inside of the rack of ribs. It kind of protects the, the muscles from the organs and kind of the stuff we're not gonna cook. To get that off, take your little knife, kind of get under there a little bit. You can kind of peel it up just a little bit. Typically butter knives work really good. If you have a butter knife. I'm right handed, so I'm gonna flip it around that way. They get really, really slippery, so grab you some paper towels. And that'll help you grip it. Kinda go to town. Hopefully it'll come off a one big strip if you're lucky. Oh, I like getting lucky. That's neat. It's a pretty nice looking rack of pork ribs. Got the breastbone cut off, the skirt off, the membrane pulled off. Unfortunately, we've got a couple bones poking through right here. A little term for that is called shiners. It typically refers to the other side, but in this case, it's this side. Not much you can do about it, just gonna have to kinda deal with it. It's an imperfect meat. Well, barbecue's an imperfect thing to cook anyway. <laughs> I think we're ready to put a rub on. So we've got a rub made. Gonna open that up just a little bit. I always like to use a shaker for ribs instead of just using a cup or like a hand and throwing it on. I think it's a lot more important to have a nice presentation with pork ribs because it's more delicate meat. But we need something to make the rub stick. I like to use olive oil. I normally I use a squirt bottle, but well. Just kind of put a little bit on there. Using olive oil is pretty awesome for steaks or for really any kind of meat. If you're gonna grill something, it's normally a pretty, pretty great way to, to start off anything. I think it's great for tri-tip. So you kind of rub it down just a little bit, flip it over, get the other side. Not too much, just enough to make the rub stick. That's kind of the thing with brisket. I don't do anything like this because there's so much blood that comes with a brisket, it makes the rub stick anyway. But ribs don't really necessarily have a whole lot of blood. They don't really have a whole lot going on anyway. So we gotta add some stuff to it. I like to do the meat side first. If you've got granules that are of different size, you wanna keep it moving all the time so something doesn't settle to the bottom, then you end up with something too salty. Salt normally settles towards the bottom, so I put the holes up top when I'm holding it. So kind of sprinkle it on there. And I like to look at a lot of pepper. I think that looks pretty good. If you'll notice, it's really even. There's no splotchiness. I didn't get too much here, I didn't get too little here. I think it's pretty good. If you've got ribs that are really, really thin, be kind of careful with the salt, because it doesn't, doesn't take much salt to get it in there. Delicately flip it over. For this side, and this is just me being a little OCD perhaps, I typically do the rub that way, so if there is a streak, it's actually going parallel to the bones. Doesn't really make any sense or mean anything. So there you go. We'll put this puppy on. Mm -hmm.